consistent effort in many many times and right now the only one is success right? so behind success things what i went through in life and maybe many of you all have been through that so when i was in sadam uh, 2010 so, uh, 2011 and 12, I did two years in Saddam. So during that period, uh, so after class 10, that is in 2010, I just found around 53 percent that that also in ICIC board, 53 percent in science. So after that, I went through different schools. So I tried in Holy Cross. I think I came around third last uh, in the competitive exam. After that, I tried in TNN. I didn't get it. Next, I tried in Amchi Public School, I didn't get. Finally, there was a government school who accepted me uh, in science because my parents wanted me to pursue science because my brother had already pursued IT, which I was interested in. So after that, so in two years' time when I was in, when I was studying in Saddam, I basically had to, uh, so we had a poultry farm, so I had to feed poultry around, I think around 1,000, chicks and go to and come back and do the same. So I did that for two years. So the turning point uh, came into my life when I was preparing for my class 12. So during my class 12, for uh, maybe around three months, uh, I just, the only thing I did was wake up uh, 7 a.m. in the morning and sleep at 7 p.m. And the whole day I just used to practice uh, physics, chemistry, and bio. So I completed my practicing physics, I think around 18 times, and eventually I could score around 18 physics and 78 in chemistry. And the second person from my school just scored around 50 in both the subjects. Managed to pass because it's a government school and you have teachers and all the problems. 
So during that time, I realized that if you complain or if you think that you are facing problem, and if you put your mind in your complaints, you will never get to focus on your goals. So I never complained about anything that happened in my life. Each and every thing, each and every day, I took it as a challenge. So with that challenge and with that opportunity which I got after I passed class 12, uh, I went to uh, another remote place than Sikkim, that is Arunachal Pradesh, where the only mode of communication when I went there was a bus that leaves from Kohati. And that was the only mode of communication to reach my college. So I, I, I had never traveled to anywhere beyond Siliguri uh, towards the rest of India till the time I graduated. So I, have, I haven't had seen the world, but I had a mindset to change the world in my own way. So the first business I started uh, when I was in college, what was a small printer. So this time when I went back to my college for speaking in TEDx of our, our college version, so I still saw the name of my company, which then I started, RZ Prints, on my door. So being an entrepreneur, the first thing that you should always remember is branding. So during that time, I never knew that branding was so important. But when I see myself right now, I think branding changed how I looked or how people looked at me. Right now, how people, how everybody looks at me is how I brand myself, right? So everybody, maybe you all know what branding is. Everybody wants to buy a shoe, which is of Adidas, Reebok, Nike or anything, right? Because it's a brand. And the whole reason you want to buy it is because you feel good when you wear it. Because it's a brand. When I was in school, I used to wear duplicate uh, shoes. And and once one incident where I remember is that when the friend quoted it out that, oh, the tubes are like that. That happens, right? And right now, everything has changed. Right now, even if I wear duplicate, it looks like original, right? Nobody will believe that I'm wearing a duplicate, right? Things change, how people look at you, how things happen. Everybody, maybe I am out here speaking to you, and you see that I went through a struggle, or I, I had a challenging life. Everybody does face that, isn't it? Every, everybody does face challenges in life. But the only thing, the only difference between you and me is because I accepted each and every challenge and I over and I and I had to overcome. I had to overcome because I lost my father in a very young age when I was just ten years old. Then, so each and every challenge you take today, or you are sitting down out here, each and every challenge you ask yourself, can you take the challenge, accept it, and overcome it? And once you start facing a challenge, then you start defeating the person whom you are right now, sitting in this table, and the person you want to be, maybe tomorrow, or everybody wants to be a person, right? Maybe somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, somebody wants to work for a big company. And the biggest battle you will ever fight in life is the person you are right now, and the person you want to be. That is the biggest battle you fight. Right now, I'm traveling across the world. Recently, I visited Vietnam. So, 
the thing which I learned out there is how like how do you all look at person or how do you judge a person being being that okay this person is successful how do you all judge money do you think money is a factor yes do you think what he does socially is also a factor yes but when i went to a world outside where i was that is uh, insecure so what i realized is people judge you with a vision you have people don't judge you with what you are right now but people judge you with what you want to be in future and what you what what effort are you putting into be out there that is same with entrepreneurship and investment what what everybody is talking about right now everybody wants to start everybody wants to get invested everybody talks about a vc angel investment but are we ready for that because the world is already moving just recently flipkart which started in i think 2000 as a very small company by few people just got acquired by a big giant walmart at at a valuation of more than 20 billion dollars that is a lot right so how do you see this as this is a eye opener for the entire world that india is a very flourishing market and people are looking at it but even back in sikkim like do you know the potential of what sikkim has have you ever seen we don't even have a single organic product which is branded well in sikkim can you name any organic product which is branded properly in sikkim can you okay so that is uh, so branded properly do you know a brand they are coming up yeah sikkim supreme so do you think any of this brand are targeting a premium market because organic itself is a premium product right you can't sell organic right here in sikkim because it's a premium brand of or it's a premium thing which everybody can afford if you go outside there is a different place where they keep organic and there is a place where they keep the rest and the difference is almost double of the price so the other potential like do you know any big company out here who is dealing in tourism yeah so basically we are not looking into things yet nobody has opened eyes out here in sikkim the big companies uh, who are operating out there mostly from calcutta or siliguri right why are we not doing that you know why because we haven't changed ourselves we haven't start we haven't started thinking differently than our parents did our parents wanted us or they want it was easy for them just complete your education and you get a government job right are we still looking our life in the very same way are you just uh, complete education try for a government job and get get hooked with that for the rest of your life are you still looking into your life and objective in that way or are you thinking of something else so today is it, it's more of a thing that you need to ask yourself whether you are ready to take on a life which isn't so easy but looks glamorous from outside that is entrepreneurship and startup so talking about my journey 
with any taxi and the entire journey of entrepreneurship. So I started with a small printer because uh, in my entire block there was nobody else printing it. So I wanted to, I just started, I never knew that I was solving a problem and later I realized that I was solving a problem for my entire block in my hostel. So everybody started printing in mine and I got my investment back in three months. That was, I think, I started that with just 2800. So that was my first startup. After that. So, not even a single person could reach to that hotel because they were not available online and the hotel owner weren't looking into the world which world is looking into. So what I did is I just created a simple website for them and I told them that I'll take 40% of commission from each and every booking uh, whichever comes through me and eventually all the booking in that hotel went through me and I made around 3 lakhs uh, in, in the first year. So I solved a problem for them and I made money for myself. Both, both the parties were happy. Right? So with that money, later uh, I, I got an opportunity to set up a small stall when I was back in college, during a college fest. So you won't believe what I did. So what I did was, uh, like I was the finance secretary of my college then, so I could get the space. So what I told my juniors is, uh, when you all go home for Diwali, please get one one cartoon of Sikkim Supreme, okay? And everybody got small things like. Uh, so after that, what I did was uh, I mixed Sikkim Supreme in water, and I sold it for almost fifty rupees per glass. <laughs> yeah, but. Everybody was satisfied, right? Because I solved a problem for them. They were thirsty in the event and they had to drink, right? So when you think about entrepreneurship and when you think about doing something on your own, the biggest thing, I think what I, like I'm not even shy a bit right now to even mop the floor. I still sweep my office if I reach if I reach my office first, even today, because I'm not shy about, and being, when you are a leader, you should always remember that you are a servant at the same time. Because if I won't sweep, if the second employees who come to the office and sweep, I won't feel good, right? And even the employee won't feel good. So if I reach my office first, I do that. And I just tell, tell them that, Okay, maybe somebody swept it last night, right? So, right now, there are people and there are startups coming across the world. But why are not, why are everyone, all the startups, all the entrepreneurs, not making it to where they plan to? You know why? Because the basic criteria of, or like the basic skills or the basic mindset an entrepreneur needs is not fulfilled by them. You know the first thing like or the most important skill that entrepreneur needs? Everybody wants to start. Right? Everybody wants to start. Everybody wants to make money. Who doesn't want to make money? Who doesn't want to be successful in life? Everybody wants. But do you know the skills what an entrepreneur needs? Have you heard anyone talking about the skill? Or people are just going around telling that, yeah, you should start. There is a very big opportunity. Like, there is an ocean waiting for you. But how do you sustain in that? Or how do you make success out of whatever opportunity you get? Have you asked yourself? Have you looked, in, have you looked into? Or not even a successful entrepreneur. If you want to be a successful person in life, do you know the skills you need? Have you even thought of it? It's not your education. Education just makes you 
qualified. Education gives you the boost. Education gives you the morale. Education gives you confidence. Education, it basically makes you feel good, right? But do you know the skills what you, what you, should, what you, what you actually need to be successful? The most important thing, it's very bitter, but it's very, it's the most important. That is positivity and positive mindset. It, it's always required wherever you go. Till the time you are not positive, you will never be successful. And nobody can define success for you. It's you yourself who can define success for yourself. If a person has a vision which is too big, even right now, if a person has a vision which is too big, you know why it's very important to have a vision? Do you know that? I never thought that I would reach out here so early in life. I never thought that. But I think the most important thing is to dream, but you need to dream with the eyes open. Have you tried that? Do you dream with your eyes open? It basically doing things which, which will take you to the place where you want to be. That is called dreaming with the eyes open. Have you tried that? Okay. So it's basically an interactive section, session from now on. Okay. So if there is a question, you can raise your hand and you can ask me any question which, which may be difficult, easy. At the same time, I'll keep on talking. So it's a more of an interactive session from now on. Okay, I'll be asking you questions and yeah, you can just answer whatever you know or you can just pass or whoever wants to answer can raise your hand or whoever wants to ask any question can raise their hand at the same time. So there is like, I look into the world in a different way. You know how I look into the world? You know how entrepreneurs should actually look into the world? If I tell you right now, most of them will disagree with me. Most of them. Okay. So, do you know what, uh, what is competition? Or whom do you think yourself as a competitor? In entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what he said is the one who is doing the best. Do you know how I take my competition as? The one who is helping me solve the problem. Have you ever looked into that way? So somebody who is in my business doing the same thing which I am doing it is the one who is actually helping me solve the problem which I want to solve. Have you ever looked into your competition or have you ever thought in that way where your competition is actually the person who is trying to or who is helping you in different ways to solve the problem you want to solve, right? Who are entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs are basically the people in the society who solve the problem, right? 